as well as being able to program the plus series controllers from the front of panel display by using the up and uh, scroll keys to go through the various menus like setup, configuration, information and, and so on. It is also possible to program them using configuration software. This comes in the form of the West configurator software and a lead plug-in connector and also to go into the computer plug-in connector. Note the colour of this plug-in connector is red. There are other cables for different types of instruments and to distinguish them um, from each other there's a colour coding for the cables. The one for the Plus Series configuration software is the red connector. So, on the controller, if you can see it, that's where we connect. Simply plug it in. And then connect the other connector to the computer. Okay, so we're now looking at the, the configuration software. We'll go to connected device. Now, up here we have a choice of the plus series instrument that we want to connect to. The default is the P, it's got star 010, so it could be a P6010 or a P8010 indicator. Let's have a look at the types of uh, controllers or indicators we can connect to in the drop down menu. PX010, so that's an indicator, PX 100, well we've got a P6100 controller, so that's one we want to select. Um, here would be the 6170 or uh, 8170, so that would be the valve motor drive controllers, and this is the PX700 or 6700 or 8700 or 4700 um, limit alarm units. So it's very important right from the beginning to choose the correct controller that you want to, uh, or indicator that you want to um, program. So we will need to select the PX100 because we're going to try and can configure as P6100 controller. Okay. So on the menu we've got PX100. Go. Connected device. Go. A warning here, don't try and use this, con uh, this cable if the controller is connected to a live process. So disconnect from the, a live process first of all. These are the communication settings, comms port, uh, the baud rate, parity, address and protocol. All standard defaults. Um, COM port 1, 4800, parity uh, N. No, address one, protocol, it's Modbus protocol. Okay. So this is where hopefully it will communicate with the device. It's finished reading, so it would have uh, taken out all of the information that's in that controller. So let's go to the configuration. Uh, menu. We can see a summary of the information that's in that controller. So if I blow it up, I'll expand it. Um, some of the notable settings here the range is 0 to 150. Option 1 it's a linear output, primary power. 
Um, what else have we got? The set point value, the proportional band, PID terms. Okay. Now let's go to um, the wizard for configuration. We've got four wizards: calibration, configuration, setup, and operator display. So we want to configure. Select configuration menu, and this is the configurator wizard. First of all, input range. This is our range limit, 0 to 150 degrees C. So if I go to the controller first of all, if I was doing it from the front of panel, configuration, let's say I wanted to save it or, or keep it as a PT100 input, range 150 upper, zero lower. So let's that's what we've got on the instrument at the moment. Let's try changing that from the software. So if we change this from 150 to say 75. So I've changed it to 75. Go to next. Go all the way through the, the menu till I get to finish. Finish. Okay, uh, I can then oops. I can then send that recipe to the controller. Okay, finish. Now if I look at the controller again by using the front of panel display, this hopefully will have changed the configuration menu from 150 upper to 75, which it has. So I'll go all the way through. Operation mode. Let's go back to configuration. Let's set it back to what it should be, 150. Let's go through the various types. Uh, the other menus we've got to control, where we can select the control type, primary or um, primary and secondary. Um, control action, the alarms, um, where we can set up the alarm values. Um, hysteresis, and also if we want to inhibit the alarms, um, we can enable or disable the loop alarm and put in a, a loop alarm time as well. The outputs, it will automatically recognise the um, what hardware is fitted into the outputs. Um, this is where we can select the type of output. So we've got linear, we can select the type of output. 40 to 20 milliamps or voltage output. Uh, and so on, really. Finish. <clears throat> okay, so we've done the configuration. Let's go to setup. Similar thing in setup, where we can set the filter time, um, the alarms, well, We've already set the alarms and we can see them again. Tuning front panel display, the strategy, um, where we can decide on the display strategy. Just as we could with the um, programming it from the front of panel and finish. Now, let's send that to the controller. Send it. Let's go back to contents. So we've done the configuration, we've done the setup. The other menu we could get from 
the controller if we were doing the front of panel display would be the info menu where we can find the type of boards that are fitted and also the serial number and date of manufacture of the controller. How do we find this with the software? We go to expert view and in the expert view we've got here recipe, let's open it up In information regarding the inputs and the outputs and so on let's have a look at information and in the information section of the recipe menu we've got the serial numbers the date of manufacture and firmware revision that's it if we go back to expert view one of the sub-menus is front panel. If we open it up, this will show you what the lock codes are in the controller, what they've been set at. In this case we've got the standard default settings of 20 for configuration, 10 for setup, and for the tuning, automatic tuning or, or, or manual, of zero. So if an operator may have changed um, one of these values, we can find out what it's changed it to by connecting it to the software, going to Expert View, clicking on Front Panel, and then we've got the information. That's it.